Hi, my name is Dr. Rekus. I want to go over a very interesting case. This was a 71-year-old female that presented with a history of a massive hiatal hernia that was picked up. The patient was complaining of some significant dysphagia. She was having chest discomfort. The hernia was actually so bad that uh, she was having a hard time swallowing and having some episodes of really significant reflux and shortness of breath. The patient felt that she could not just take a deep breath. She was uh, consented for a robotic hiatal hernia repair and nissenfund implication. And when we started the case, we did see a very large, approximate 10 centimeter hiatal hernia. The majority of her stomach was actually located in her thoracic cavity. And we started this dissection the same way we usually do by entering the right side of the stomach, entering the parts flaccida. And you can see here the dissection using the robot, uh, robotic vessel sealer. Um, it was a very meticulous dissection. Luckily, the patient didn't have many other comorbidities. And the first thing we had to do was really free and mobilize the esophagus. Once we really started to uh, get in there, we saw the patient's left gastric vessel that was really located superiorly. And after mobilizing the right side of the esophagus, we went ahead and started to go circumferentially around, taking down a lot of these vessels and adhesions located around the esophagus that were basically tethering the esophagus in place. So the goal really was to mobilize the stomach, mobilize the esophagus so we can get enough length to place the GE junction thoracically um, where it was located back into our abdominal cavity. Here, using the robotics advanced technology, we can see a real clear view up into the chest. And here we are now mobilizing the left side of the esophagus. Right below the vessel sealer, you can see the aorta thumping away. Um, again, this stomach and this esophagus were fixed in place. And here we are just being very careful to mobilize the stomach, mobilize the esophagus. Within the esophagus, we do have a bougie in place that is not only protecting the stomach, but helping us really visualize where the esophagus is. And again, this dissection gets carried on very carefully and meticulously, just putting a little bit of traction on with the tip-up instrument from the robot. And right underneath here, you see the patient's aorta being very careful and very cautious to mobilize the area without causing any damage. Here we are being very careful to mobilize the entire sac involving the hiatal hernia. And I think that's a very important move whenever you're doing these large hiatal hernias. The sac has to be completely and circumferentially mobilized down or else it continues to tether the location of the esophagus and stomach in place. Here you really see the vessel sealer doing an amazing job. Um, it's very clear here using the camera of what my planes are. And I like to refer to this tissue as a fluffy tissue. These little spider webs are the areas that need to get taken down. So again, at this point, we've really mobilized the esophagus. We were able to maintain some traction on the stomach and relocate the stomach and GE junction into the abdominal cavity. But still, as you can see, very tedious job, very large hiatal hernia. And here we are freeing the left and right crews in preparation for the final closure. Here we are closing the repair. Um, again, the goal here is to provide a tension-free repair. This is done with uh, zero ethabon sutures. Um, I like single interrupted sutures that are being placed to slowly reapproximate the crews without strangulating the tissue. An option here is to use ple pledgets. Um, I've moved away from one single suture, um, and I do like a interrupted technique. And we find that with slow traction and counter traction and closing the uh, hiatal hernia, you can do it without any excessive tension. And we can close some very large defects using this technique. So multiple sutures were put in place. Again, being careful not to stretch the diaphragm too much. We've measured the defect here, and I do like to use meshes. I use an absorbable phasix mesh for the majority of my cases when they're larger than about three or four centimeters. I think this does add a, an additional portion of reinforcement um, to the repair. The benefit of the phasix mesh is it does get reabsorbed after about nine months. Um, there was a, a small area of the fascia that I wanted to reapproximate here. So for this, I used a, a 3.0 micro suture. 
And here now I'm taking the phasix mesh. I put a C on the mesh to make sure that we're placing the coated side anteriorly towards uh, any of the intestines. <laughs> and here I'm just basically suturing the mesh superficially to the fascia of the diaphragm. Um, and the goal is here to make sure it stays in place. And eventually the goal again is to have the body stabilize with this mesh and to reinforce our repair, taking off as much tension as we can. Once the mesh is secured in place, we make sure we check for any issues we may have with hemostasis. Um, the mesh is in place. I at this point, I'm getting ready to go ahead and proceed with my fund application part. I usually do a 360 distance fund application, making sure we're having a nice loop, a nice uh, uh, loose wrap that, that we put together. Um, again, all the things I like to use as far as sutures go, except for the diaphragmatic repair or absorbable suture. I have been a real fan of these V-lock sutures. I think they're very easy to use. They don't require uh, extra knots. Um, and... Uh, they're again absorbable. So again, once I'm pretty confident that my mesh is not going to go anywhere and it's secured in place, we're going to go ahead and complete the mesh placement. And then we're going to move on to the Nissen. Um, I try to limit the amount of instruments that I use. You can see here the majority of my cuts are being done with a vessel sealer. I really like this instrument and I find that it can replace scissors in many different um, kinds of procedures. And that's decreasing the cost that we have to spend on our patients. So here I'm grabbing the posterior portion of the stomach. I'm performing my wrap. And here you can see the Nissen fund application being started. The first portion of this uh, wrap, I do uh, some nice bites of the stomach. With the first throw, I do incorporate a portion of the esophagus to make sure that this doesn't slip. Again, the goal is to really approximate without strangulating the tissue here. After we place our first wrap in, we go ahead and uh, place our next wrap sutures in place. During this case, we also did use ICG dye to make sure that the stomach was healthy. It was perfused and using the firefly, te firefly technology of the robot, we have a great way of actually making sure that there is no um, detriment to the blood supply so we don't have any leaks down the road with an ischemic stomach. Uh, again, here we are finalizing the wrap of the stomach, approximating without strangulating the stomach. This is done over a bougie. Personally, I do like the Vizigi bougies and, or any suctionable bougie that uh, can be used not only for placement, insufflation, but also doing leak tests um, if you choose to. Here's a gastropexy of the anterior portion of the stomach to the diaphragm. This again hopefully will prevent any slippage of the stomach. And at the end of the case, once everything's said and done, I do do an intraoperative gastroscopy. The bougie is removed and I go to the patient's uh, by bedside and I place a scope in. I place in a scope and I make sure the hiatal hernia repair is closed, the stomach is healthy and viable, and the repair looks sound. Thank you for watching.